Welcome in to episode 34 of Rami and Drew. I am Robbie Backlaw. That is Drew Flaggy. We're just a couple of Milwaukee-based comedians. We talk sports and whatever else comes to mind. We are live on uh, Twitter at, at Rami is tweeting on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and uh, over on my Facebook page as well. You can follow us on Spotify and Apple if you like the audio version. Uh, I honestly don't know if uh, the stream had started, Drew, when you uh, when you just let out that huge burp. That that might have been that might have been out to the masses or you know whatever we're calling this. <laughs> I never claim not to be human. I have bodily functions. <laughs> you know, I still, and we're going to get into some Bucks talk in a minute. They get the win yesterday and uh, no Giannis. We'll talk about how much of Giannis we need to see uh, down the stretch here. But I still have like, I don't know. I don't have, like, I do curse on here. I do curse when, when we, when we, when we get rolling, but like, I still have this thing where if I need to sneeze or burp or fart or anything, like for my radio days where you had to be all professional and shit, like I will, I'll, I'll mute my microphone and I don't, I don't, should I just let it rip? I don't know. I like, I, I've told you this before and that's something I maybe shouldn't say as the host of a podcast, but I don't really listen to podcasts. Are people just letting them rip on there or is there, is there professionalism and people are muting their mics as they're making all these disgusting noises? Well, for most basketball and sports related podcasts, those guys are pretty, uh, they're, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty, you know, laced up. They're nice. They're bu- okay. Uh, JJ Reddick swears. He says things okay. like fucking ridiculous. He says things like that. And you're like, ooh, edgy. <laughs> and, ooh. <laughs> JJ's spicy. Oh, JJ's got a spicy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than that, no, they're not burping and farting. I, I draw the line at farting. I don't want to be the okay. fart. But also, I mean, the stream had started when I burped, so. Sure. I It might have. I'm honestly not sure. Let us know in the comments. I don't, I honestly don't know. Um, If I'm being real, real with you, I've, I've let a few rip while we're going, but they're silent. You know what I mean? I know how to, again, I'm, I, again, I'm a professional broadcaster. Okay. So I know, <laughs> you know, I, 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 know, I know how to muffle it. You know what I mean? We have a mutual friend that uh, I was playing call of duty with him one night and uh-huh. he's, art into his own microphone that sits right by your face so he took his headset off to squeeze out a fart into the microphone and he farted so he shit his pants in in a game lobby (laughs) and because the microphone was far away from his face he was like like a like a muted oh no (laughs) i don't want to uh i don't want to name anybody by name especially when when you're saying stuff like that i'm gonna text you I'm going to text you the name of the person I think it was, and you tell me if I'm right, okay? Kill it. You, okay. Yep. Okay. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> you didn't get to put a last initial in there. <laughs> yep. Okay. It. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then I didn't even need to also ask. Know- when he said, oh, no, you know, definitely <laughs> own a voice. He's like, oh, like the <laughs> sad level of disappointment. <laughs> yep. I, lo- I love that. I didn't I really didn't even need to ask that. We have such great friends. Uh, wonder, but let's get your fingers touch four buttons. I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's exactly. <laughs> I was counting how many times with your thumb. I was counting how many letters you were typing. Yeah. Unless there was oh, delete, delete, delete. No, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. The Bucks, uh, they win yesterday in the return of Chris Middleton, who was very good. It was he, like he didn't miss a beat. 25 minutes. He went, uh, what did he go? Eight for 15 from the field, two for four from three, 22 points on the day. That's like, that's. I mean, you're looking for a few more minutes when he's healthy and he's back in game shape, but that's like that's a Chris Middleton game right there when when yeah. when you look at the box score. Yeah, that's exactly what I guess you know that's what he's being paid to do. Um Yeah. You know, I'm a big Chris Middleton is good guy. I like Chris Middleton. Uh the only thing that looked bad on his part was kind of his defense because he picked up four kind of lazy fouls just because he was getting beat a little bit. But other than that, like no, nah, it's all stuff that can get cleaned up and he'll get back into game shape. But as far as having his legs under him and he came out great. Like he was three for three mm-hmm. in his shots, 
and two of those were threes. Um, then, you know, the pace of the game, you know, tightened up and rotations, you sit down, you come back out and yeah, he looked human again, but he was fine. Like he was, he did exactly what I expect Chris Middleton to do on a nightly basis. It was, it was a Which good, is, yeah, that's good, good to game. see. That's good to see when he misses six weeks. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. if he came out, if he came out and went, uh, I don't know, three for 15 from the field, we, that I wouldn't panic. I'd be like, ah, rusty. You know what I mean? He's just shaking off some rust, but the fact that there was no rust is, is a big positive and a big plus for the bucks in, in his, in his return and ramping him up and getting him ready for the playoffs. Well, doc rivers even said a couple of weeks ago, like the first time we played the Clippers had this been a playoff game, Middleton would have played. So right. there was no rush to get him back, I guess, you know, obviously he has been, he's been practicing. Um, no, I was, I was happy with everything that we got out of Middleton. I thought yesterday was probably Damian Lillard's best game as a buck, to be That's honest. Good. I, just the assists and everything. And yeah, the crazy thing about that entire game for Damian Lillard is he didn't have to utilize Giannis in the pick and roll. He was finding guys everywhere, like cutters and stuff. Like guys were moving around and yeah. he was finding every one of them, including Chris Middleton, who he hasn't had a whole lot of time to gel with. So that was, that was really nice to see that he, he looked like he he looked like the guy that we expected him to be, and then a little bit more on the playmaking side. Sixteen assists. I didn't. Re- I knew. I knew he had a good game in terms of the, the you first- know the fa- the facilitating, but sixteen assists. Damn, and and ten of nineteen from the field. Yeah, I will. I'll I'll take that from Dame Lillard night in and night out if you can get it. Jesus Christ! If he does that night in and night out, you might as well just plan the parade route. That's- they're still they're still undefeated if he shoots 50 percent or better you throw 16 assists on top of that and the other team really stands no chance well in that house so there was the, the game we can go back to sacramento he could have had 15 or 16 assists in that game just everybody mm-hmm. was missing every shot um guys had this is kind of different the difference between sacramento and the suns sacramento at least tries on defense the suns are god awful on defense right um they are they look like how we looked early in the season. They are terrible defensively. And yeah. Yeah. I was, I was just real quick, just real quick. Let me jump. I was, I was thinking about this watching the game yesterday and you know, for all the, the, the buzz about how bad the bucks look and, and Dame hasn't looked like himself. And I, maybe this is just because Dame and Giannis are better and expectations are more. But man, Bradley Beal is having a career worst season offensively. Nobody over there, except for Kevin Durant, is really playing any defense. And I don't really, dude. They're fighting for Kevin Durant has been playing good defense this year. I don't know. I don't know if you that if you have heard, <laughs> but he has been playing good defense this year. But we and and they're fighting to stay out of the playing tournament. And we don't hear like. We don't hear nearly as much about the Suns and how disappointing or how short of expectations they're following as uh, they're following as as we do with the Bucks. Well, Tim Legler was on uh, JJ Reddick's podcast earlier today, and he talked about how he's he actually was like, "I'm fucking done with this team. Like they are, they are a play-in team, and they will lose in the play-in. They they can't hmm. close up games. They've it's been a thing when they've been on like the ABC showcases." And when they've had all the guys from like inside the NBA talk about them, they can't close out games. And it's because there's not one guy outside of Grayson Allen who plays defense on that team. And I'm going to say that does trickle down to Kevin Durant. And I actually think some of that's on Frank Vogel, to be honest, because in late game situations, he wants to go with a smaller lineup to maximize offense, but none of those motherfuckers play defense. Yeah. If I'm honest, I'd be like, why is Nurkic on the bench? Dude, it's like you want to have the most effective, and this is you know not a Suns podcast, but you want to have the most effective offense, and then it's like, yeah, but you're also hemorrhaging points in the paint. You're hemorrhaging points from the three point line. It's like, wh- like, so what? What are you going to do? You're going to outscore teams in crunch time? No, you're not, because not nobody to, plays defense. And not that's to take any, comes down. Not, go ahead, sorry. That's where it comes down to the whole thing where it's like they always talk about Kevin Durant. It's like, why is he never in the GOAT thing? Because he doesn't play defense. This might be a career best defensive year. Well, all that means is maybe he recorded five blocks this season. That's it. That's a career high. Because that dude does not play defense. He couldn't care to play defense. He he looks like the all-star game is all year round. He can score from anywhere. He's a threat. And then also, he didn't score in like the last like six minutes of the game. 
So why you no, have he him disappeared. Out there? He completely disappeared. Uh, and and it would have been and not to take anything away from Big Bob, who uh, went 13 of 20 from the field oh. yesterday, five of five from three. He had 26 points in the first half. But uh, maybe maybe at some point somebody gets a hand in that dude's face as he's absolutely lighting you up in the first half. That was fun to watch, dude. That was crazy to see. And it's like, I mean, five for five from three. And then also he didn't take a three in the second half. <laughs> like that Yeah, was... I don't know why. I don't know why. And and the Suns were able to kind of creep back into it. It was what a six point game at, yeah. at one point before the Bucks pulled away again. I don't know why they 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 sort of took the ball out of Bobby's hands or I don't know. I don't know if that was a choice they made or if or if he was deferring in the second half and other things were opening up, but it seemed strange to me how little we saw of, of, of Bobby Portis in the second half after the type of first half that he had. Yeah, I mean, I tweeted that he was not even hot. He was just nuclear yesterday. Yeah. That, that was great to see. And, yeah, uh, that that was awesome seeing one guy just actually step up in the absence of Giannis, where it's like, oh, you just put up Giannis numbers? Just, just it wasn't like, it wasn't like. He literally like, did. He literally had a Giannis line. He, he had what? He went 13 of 20 from the field. I mean, five of five from three. I, that'd be great if we got that from Giannis. But 10 rebounds, 31 points. That's that's a Giannis line. You throw yeah. in a few more assists and a few a few less five uh, three pointers. And that, that's a Giannis line right there. That was that was great to see. Uh, it was cool. Like, he got, was just going like everybody looked like they were going yesterday. It was good. Connaughton knocked down a couple shots like. The whole thing, like, earlier in the year, like, just to be clear, when we talked about, like, a trade deadline, Bobby Portis is a guy that I don't want to ever get rid of, but if you can get something, if you can improve your team, he's mm -hmm. the guy you're going to, unfortunately, have to part ways with. Yeah. And he said in his post game yesterday that he was, like, he did, like, kind of take exception to the way people were talking about him, and, yeah, like, the noise was there, and he heard about it. And, like, there's always so many different camps of fans where it's, like, you got the people that on a night to night basis, this guy sucks. This guy's great. This guy sucks. And they do that kind of shit. And then there's like the people I think like us that were like, well, if you can improve, it sucks to get rid of a guy like that. And I don't want to get rid of him. However, if you do get better, it's like, that's the business. Yeah. You got to give up business. something. You got to give up something to get something. And that uh, we, we were never out on Bobby Portis, but, and we were never like, you have to trade Bobby Portis. But if there was, if there was a deal out there that made you a better basketball team, he's one of the movable pieces on this team. Yeah. You're obviously not going to trade Giannis or Dame or Chris, or even, even a Brooke Lopez. You know what I mean? But after, after those four guys, pretty much everybody is, is on the block. If it's a move that, that makes you better. And and yeah. I'm glad they didn't because Bobby has really turned it up in the second half after the All Star break. Well, the big thing too is everybody knows he's capable of this. And again, right. it's unreasonable to expect 31 points every night out of a guy like Bobby Portis. Like yeah. he, he and he could be a starter on another team. He could absolutely be a starting power forward for somebody else, or he could be a starting center on another team or something like that. Like there's he absolutely can be a starter and he can put those numbers on a night to night basis, playing significant minutes. I'm happy he's our guy off the bench. He's fantastic. I love um, Bobby Portis. He's so capable of just being that guy. But like every night, if he's putting up, if you're giving us 12 to 15 points a night off the bench, <clears throat> 10 at the minimum, dude, we're we're looking great. <clears throat> and and, and he brings was, and he brings that intangible that we talk about with Pat Beverly where his energy is sort of infectious and, and contagious and, and it, it lifts, it lifts the whole to like the, the vibes have been immaculate since the second half. And I think that has a lot to do with, with Bobby and, and Pat Bev injecting a little something into it. They also said that, um, they also said that like they did, they were listening to all the reports. of yep. everything. So it's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I hope that they listened to what some of those analysts yesterday had to say after the sun's, lost that game not the bucks didn't win that game according to michael wilbon that that <laughs> fucking um and then you know kendrick perkins who he's out of breath man that guy i don't know how he's winded all the time sitting um but like kendrick perkins, <laughs> that'll happen when you're a big dude man i used to be 300 plus that that'll just happen you'll just be out of breath you're just in a yeah. state of out of breath you don't get out of breath you just are out of breath he like whenever he starts a sentence, it sounds like he just heard bad news. He's like, yeah. like that's 
Like, <laughs> my God. I think I can coach bomb a minute. It's crazy. And he fucking... He was talking about how in the playoffs, he didn't say this is a suggestion. He said this is what the Bucks are going to do. They're going to play Giannis at the five. And Bobby no, Porter, they're not. <laughs> what the fuck no, are not. you watching? Did you just forget about Brooke Lopez? I like how people Holy just say shit, dude. I like how people just say shit. It's, not, that's... it's like, oh, here, there's a great, there's a great, uh, a test here to say should the Bucks play Giannis at the five for significant minutes? How's that working with Kevin Durant for the Suns? Oh yeah, they lose in the fourth quarter constantly. I'm not Dude. Not a better defender than Kevin Durant, and that's not even close. But holy shit, it's like it's like they're just making up scenarios where like the Bucks are gonna want to go small and quick to end games. Like, no, maybe it, maybe we'll just look at what teams we're playing and go from there. Because there are some games where I, Pat Bev could be in the closeout lineup, you know, just to try to play defense. And then also there are going to be games where maybe Pat Bev's on the bench and you got Jay Crowder out there to try to clamp somebody. Like, just and based who, on the yeah, who's, who's trying to get Brooke Lopez off the floor? Who um, forgets about Brooke Lopez? It's crazy. It's like, that's ridiculous. Like, like, what game did you guys watch today? It's, but that being said... And, and and there are often stupid things said, um, really everywhere, but especially in some of the corners of the internet that that you travel in, um, namely Facebook and and uh, and and Milwaukee Bucks Nation, and and you often send me screenshots of stupid things that that people say on there, and uh, and we have a good laugh about it. You know what I mean? We make fun of them, we roast them a little bit, we have a good laugh about it. You and me, um, without without you know doing it to them and hurting their feelings. We just do it between the two of us. And now we're going to end here on the podcast from, from time to time. But you sent me this yesterday from a uh, top contributor, Tyrone Thompson, who said, should Giannis sit another game to make sure he's good? I mean, look at how well we played yesterday. And I saw that. And usually the ones that you send me are like really dumb. And <laughs> that, that's the point of you sending them to me is that they're really dumb and we could have a good laugh about it. I read that and I was like, eh, not, not the worst point I've ever heard. Like I wasn't, I wasn't sure why you were sending that to me because it doesn't sound that crazy to me because I don't think he's saying like sometimes drew and I've run into this a lot in my days talking sports for a living People like a, a superstar will get hurt and the team will win without him and they'll go, oh, they're, they're better without Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever yeah. Yeah, or whatever. That, and that's never true. Like that, that's, that's never, ever true no. when you're talking about your best player. I don't think that's what he was saying here. I think he's saying, uh, I'll read it again. Should Giannis sit another game to make sure he's good? First of all, I'll stop right there. I mean, not a terrible idea on the surface. This is your best player. You want to make sure he's healthy going into the playoffs. I, I read uh, or I heard them talking about yesterday during the game on ESPN. They quoted Doc Rivers, who told Giannis, I love heroes, but I love heroes in April and May. I don't I don't need heroes in March, which I think is is a really wise thing. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I'm I want them to keep the two seed. We've talked about that before here on the show but more important than that i i want Giannis as close to 100 as as he can possibly be when you tip off the playoffs and then the second part of his of his uh, his his post he says i mean look at how well we played yesterday again i don't think he's saying we're better without Giannis. i think he's saying they can still win some games if even if Giannis doesn't doesn't play and because especially with Chris being back and 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 Dame heating up a little bit and you saw what Bobby did I don't I don't I didn't think it was that terrible an idea to be quite honest with you so I understand it and also it's like but we are gonna have with Giannis not playing yesterday Giannis is gonna have like six days off when we play the Celtics mm -hmm. and what Giannis was on the injury report for was just hamstring tightness so right there, play against the Celtics. And if you want to sit the next night, do it. Fine. Um, I think that right now with us getting our team healthy, this is the best barometer with Dame playing well. Uh, our bench guys are all falling into place and actually playing well between Pat, Bobby. Now we got Pat Bev. 
you know, uh, Jay Crowder can slot back into more of his role off the bench. And you could have your true starting five, and that's with Malik Beasley playing decent defense and having off and on shooting nights, but still more so than not, he's been reliable all year long. Um, I would like to see our starting five against the Celtics. The Celtics sat Jalen Brown, uh, Porzingis, and a couple, I think Derek White sat yesterday too. They, uh, they, they are, they're sitting there guys getting ready to go uh, against the Bucks. Like this is going to be, I think Wednesday is going to be an absolute dog fight. Um, just with every, I mean, everyone's healthy on both teams. So I think Giannis should probably play in that one. Cause if it was something again, like if it was like a rolled ankle, like what happened with Middleton, I'm better with him sitting, but this is just mid season bangs and bruises. And, you know, he's got a little strain here. It was scarier when he went out with like his Achilles being tight. So yeah. I'm like, if, if it was the Achilles tightness again, flaring up and you're like, that's a really tricky thing that could potentially end a career, then don't. But, but I just think, I just think it's, I think it's everything. I, I think, I think it's, I think it's all, I think it's all of that. And I know people hate the term load management. And Giannis is the last person that, that, that is, that has utilized load management over over the last five or six years when when it became the hot thing to do in the NBA. But down the stretch here, what do they have left? 12, 13, 12, 13 games left in the season. I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah, down, the down the stretch here, I think I think load management is is a, a really wise thing with yeah. with the guy with a guy like Giannis and how important he is to this team. Yeah, I'm totally fine with him sitting games here and there. I would I personally for it being must see TV. I want to see the Bucks Same. currently constructed play the Celtics at full strength. I want both teams at full strength. I want. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. But as far as what's best for the Bucks, I'm I'm, I'm not play. against the idea of of playing the load management game with Giannis here and maybe two games off, one game on, or one game off, one game on. However, however it yeah. lines up. But he's got. But I mean, he's also got. Like I said, he's got six days without sure. playing full contact or whatever. So. That's fine, honestly. Like, it, it, I would prefer he plays this one. If he doesn't play the next one or the next two, okay, cool. It flared up and you can't play it. Like, I was just, yeah. I want to see, obviously, I want to see my best players play against the best team in the NBA right now. I want to see fun. where they're at. Uh, Q says, if Giannis is actually hurt or legitimately fatigued, then yes, sit him Wednesday. Giannis doesn't have an off switch or a lower gear. He will be balls out if he plays on Wednesday, if he suits up. Yeah, yes. and that's that's the other thing, and I think that's that's where Doc Rivers and and telling him, you know, that I, I like heroes in April and May, and not not so much in March. Doc Rivers and and the Bucks medical team, and if the front office needs to get involved, they need to really be the ones to to rein Giannis in because he's not going to rein himself in, and it's part of what you love about him, but it can also be like the thing that 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 is self destructs at at the the end of the day if, if you don't play it right with him going into the playoffs yeah and like i said i'm if it's if it was anything other than a hamstring i would be like eh, all right maybe if it was like the knee or the patella thing that he's always got on the injury or or you know it's whatever it is like quad strains even i'm like but this is just a string i'm like i'm good with him trying to give it a go i like that so that would be yeah, that would be. I just got sent a thing from one of the guys who always sends me shit. It's the whole the Bucks are. It's the meme of like the Bucks are like undefeated when Damian Lillard shoots fifty percent or something stupid like that. Like this dude, he he does he doesn't want to take into account the whole thing of like what what where do these wins also come from outside of just as simple as Damian Lillard shooting fifty percent? Because if Dame Lillard shoots, if he goes two for four in a game, do you really think we're fucking winning that game? I don't know. Oh, maybe Willard got 75%. He went three for four from the floor tonight. 75%. Well, every time Dame Lillard shoots 75%, we also lose that game. <laughs> well, because yeah, he scored fucking four points. Yeah, it's like like you just hear him like, yeah, it's like it's a neat little meme and everything like that. But also it's like you know, calm almost, down. God damn it. Now it's just like you, it turned into a thing again. Because we you have need to calm down. This is more ironic people. I don't mind the stat. I don't mind the stat. I think it's a Fine. good stat. Yeah. yeah, it's a great step, but it's like it's not like you're you're not sitting here going domino fucking Drew. You're wrong about basketball. 
Like, it's like, dude, like, look at the other numbers surrounding. Oh do, do you think that anything that had to do with that win last night? Do you think anything that had to do with that was maybe Chris Middleton also shooting 50%? Per- Whoa, when Chris Middleton and Damian Lillard shoot 50%, we, we beat the Suns 100% of the time. Wow. I'm texting, you, I'm texting you the name of the person I think just set you off. You tell me if I'm right. You're probably right again. No, it wasn't. Oh, it. oh, okay. All right. No, because okay. he doesn't. He doesn't send me stupid shit as much as him and I argue and we're trying to get him on the thing. I'm just, you know, we got to we got to line up getting Eric on here so we can scream at each other. <laughs> this is going to be like sharp and skip. That's what it's going to be like listening to us argue. Nobody, nobody gets under your skin like Eric Smith does. And I love it. That's it's my favorite. It's my favorite thing about her group chat. It's great to watch. It's fun. It's That's... good. It's good. It's good. Wholesome entertainment. But it's not because it's like at least Eric does know what the fuck he's talking about sometimes. And he's a good enough friend that he knows how to piss me off. That's like, <laughs> that's like so many of our friends, like they know how to push the button. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like legit. When I told this guy the other night, the guy that sent me this, I told him that he has a fucking girl brain because he cares all about the drama and the gossip around the NBA. He's got okay. a fucking brain. It's okay. it's Mosa's in brunch. And oh my God, do you like, like somebody? Oh my God! I heard Damian Lillard's thinking about leaving. Oh my God! It's by the way, it's chick brain bullshit, dude. It's for the Bravo channel. My girlfriend's been watching uh, Real Housewives. I told you, I told you this during when we had Simone on last week yeah. from Sacktown Sports. Uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, dude. They are. I don't know. I don't know how people do this with these shows, Drew. I don't know. It's it's just it's just an hour of fighting. It's just an hour of just yelling at each other and crying and walking out of the room it's <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't know man it's you, a lot it's overwhelming i don't want to put your girlfriend on blast right now sure like, yeah she comes from a broken home because that might be it <laughs> no it's she a, comes from a great family her dad's a pastor her parents are married i don't know how many years it's like a comfortable pair of jeans where it's like a plate <laughs> thrown at a wall she can't go to bed so I slip right back into it. It's just, it feels like home. No. You bitch! No. You bitch! It's just like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people fall asleep. Like, hey, I had one more thing I wanted. And I, and I got to fall asleep to my dad saying, oh, yeah, well, then you fucking wash it. So, like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I had one more thing I wanted to touch on before we wrap it up. People who uh, who know me uh, know I'm a Bears fan. We haven't had a show, Drew, since uh, since the Bears traded Justin Fields. The uh, the Justin Fields era has come to an end in Chicago, and they got a fucking sixth round pick for him. A fucking sixth round pick is all you got for Justin Fields. But uh, all right. right, that's the that's the last thing I'm gonna be bitter about in the Justin Fields era because they fucked it up. From from day one to to day whatever it was when they traded him, but uh, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna I'm 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 on the Caleb Williams bandwagon. I don't know, Drew, if you had a preference as a Packers fan on which way the Bears went with that move and who you think could be better or more of a threat. I don't know if I can even term it a threat given the the way that that rivalry has played out since uh, the Matt Lafleur era started, but. I'll, I'm gonna get behind Caleb Williams, dude, and and I hope he's great. But I also hope I, I hope he's just a little bit better than Justin Fields because that dude did nothing but ball out and and give it all out there for the Bears. And I'll always root for that dude. And I think they just they fucked it up from day one to the end in terms of his play on the field and everything that they did to hold him back to diminishing his value. And ending up getting a sixth round pick for him, they couldn't have handled Justin Fields worse. And I hope the the Steelers do a much better job because the dude deserves better than that. Yeah, and I think he'll be honestly starting uh, for the Steelers soon. I don't think Russ is gonna be. I, th- I don't think he's got a lot left in the NFL. True, uh, agreed. So I think Fields will be out there a little bit sooner than they had hoped. Um, but like the thing is, I would have felt more threatened by the Bears given their new weapons that they got in the off season mm-hmm. held on to Justin Fields, because there is a learning curve coming out of college, going into the NFL and you have to play against NFL quality defenses. And what ends up happening is like they, he knows how to play against green Bay. Now, given we're going to be changing up our defensive scheme this year with our new defensive coordinator, yeah. but also 
he knows some of the personnel that are out there. You know, it's like he would know who some of these guys are at this point by having some familiarity about it. And then eventually knowing the personnel you're playing against, you can probably sneak out a win here and there just on instinct or knowing what these guys are doing when just tendencies and when the game slows down. And now the process starts all over again for, for the Bears. So mm-hmm. it's like, how it's going to happen? Like what now? Caleb Williams is going to be terrible. Like what happens if he's terrible? Well, now what? Now the coach is getting fired. And then what happens? Well, now we bring in a new coach that fucking got to do something else. It's a cycle, you said, where it's going to be this revolving door of the quarterback, the coach, the GM. And they're just going to yep. be moving it around over and over again. And because they're just trying to be the Packers. Like they just want to, they want to, okay, this is going to be a fucking nerd thing to say. It's like what DC did trying to match the Avengers, where there were five movies that came out going into that shit where it's like, it was really good already. And they're like, well, let's just expedite all of this and just throw it all out there. And it's like, yeah. And then it fell apart and it was terrible. And everybody thought everything sucked and it was bleak and sad and rainy and depressing. And the colors were terrible and it was just muted and washed out and frustrating. And that's the bears. The bears are Zack Snyder's DC universe. (laughs) The Packers are beautiful and vibrant and colorful and fun. (laughs) You're right. You're right. I can't even. I can't even deny it as a Bears fan. You brought up you brought up that I'd feel a lot better about this, Drew, if if Matt Eberflus wasn't the head coach, because I think it's pretty clear to anybody watching that if if they don't win this year, he's out. And 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 this all feels very familiar again with the quarterback going into his second year with his second head coach and his second offensive system to learn. And you're you're not too far away from a, a, the GM who drafted him being fired and a new guy coming in and wanting his own quarterback. And it's, it, it feels to, I love what they've done in terms of the talent that they've put around the quarterback position this off season. It's better with the additions that they made to DJ Moore and Cole Komet. It's better than it's been in a long time, but the real wrench in this thing to me and the thing that really still has me worried is the head coach. I don't think he's very good. I, I I think he's the worst head coach in the division. And if you end up in last place in this division again, you're you're gonna be looking for a new head coach and you're you're starting a cycle over that feels very familiar to Bears fans. And it's a cycle that breaks quarterbacks. Yeah. And I, I mean I just I like I don't want to dance on their grave already right now because it's not even sure. it's a right. bummer. But like you just see it coming where it's like, it's like how many times are they going to do this? And it kind of makes me sad because so many of you guys that are my friends are bears fans. I'm like, damn, like, well, I'm glad I you have some, I'm, I'm glad somewhere in there, there's some empathy and some sympathy it's from, funny from Drew Flaggy. twice a year. It, it, like it is funny. And All right. I mean, just the sadness that every one of you had when like Jordan love, <laughs> it's like the last game of the season and just watching everyone be like, Oh no, like it's happening again. And it's like I knew exactly what was gonna happen. I was I did uh I did Sparky's Packers podcast uh the day the 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 couple days before before that and I said I'm I'm expecting to I'm not gonna get my hopes up only to have my heart broken again. I know how this thing plays out. We start feeling good as Bears fans, and then here come the Packers and 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 it's pain again, and I'm not gonna keep on I won't have expectations until they give me reason to have expectations. And I hope Caleb Williams changes that. And I hope the bears have learned from their mistakes of the past and they get it right this time, but I won't believe it till I see it. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have to prove it. And like, it's just, it's one of those things too, where like, I didn't want to get too high on Jordan love on his like first season starting, you know, and stuff. Like I didn't want to be all like, yeah, like love's going to be the guy. I'm going to buy a Jordan love Jersey immediately. I was like, Oh, I'll wait and see what goes on here. And then it just, it just happened the way I'm like, well, if I would have just predicted being like, yeah, they're going to, they're going to wax the fucking bears again. I would have like, I wouldn't have been. <laughs> I was like, let's, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, guy. And then it happened. And I was like, <laughs> you dorks. And it's just, 
Yeah, just, and it it should have been predictable to anybody. Anybody who's who's a fan of either team, it should have been it should have been pretty predictable. I hope things change, but I'm not I'm not counting on it. I just don't buy into curses and like ethereal whatever. Oh, oh no, 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 no. This is away. It's like I don't buy into that shit. Like it's, this is just incompetence. This is yeah. just incompetence as an organization as of of. The, and I'm talking about the Bears. It's just their pure incompetence, and the Packers are pretty damn good. At, at this football thing and well, as an organization from top to bottom i think also it's just having a cohesive vision on what they right have. yes and that's not what the bears organization does like the the gm coach and quarterback are not all on the same page and that's what you're saying about them breaking quarterbacks right yep well that's all i got drew did you have anything else you wanted to add before we uh, wrapped up episode 34 here of rami and drew yeah, ain't it like 12 days until opening day or something like that? Or 13 days or something? Is it that close? Really? Yeah, you're right. Wow. Snuck up on me. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. That's... I uh, just today realized that opening day is on a Tuesday, so I can't sneak out of work and do that. That sucks. Um, I mean, now that you said that on your podcast, you can't, but you could have very conveniently been sick that day. No, I because my boss already knows that I'm not. I don't call in sick. Like I'm, I'm never sick. And then this year I went home throwing up twice. Like in the, in the 11 years I've worked where I've worked, I've gone home from sick or I've gone home from work sick three times. And two of those times was this year. Hmm. I'm yeah. going to say we should uh, do a show from, uh, from the parking lot, but apparently you won't, you won't be available. Tuesdays are like my longest day too. There's no way I'm getting out of that. Hmm. So, all right. Well, yeah, can't get out of that one. Uh, we got Buck Celtics Wednesday. We're doing one of these tomorrow. We're going to have the media. Don't you got Boston fans uh, or something? I, I have my former co host in Sacramento. It's a huge, huge Boston guy. He's originally from the area. He's actually back in the area now doing his own Boston themed uh, podcast. But he's I'll a friend of mine. He's I'll a friend of mine, Drew. And I, I know I'll you will. Was I nice to Simone? Yes. I also you, like the Kings, so that's not fair. You like the Kings, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not a fair thing to say. <laughs> I guess. Not a fair thing. <laughs> well, what, is, but, what, what are his takes on Kate Middleton missing? Does he... You know, that's a good question. That's a good question. We should we should get Nick Cattles on and find out what let's he thinks about Kate Middleton missing. And let's ask him all about the royal family. And then if we have times, we can talk about Oh, Kate. by the way, did you see... The picture of the person we're supposed to believe is Kate Middleton out in a farmer's market yesterday. No, you got to say oh, it's it is not her. It is very much not her. Hold on. <laughs> let me see if I can find it real quick. It's it, I don't know how they think they're getting away with this, man. I don't know. They can't she, keep getting away with this. <laughs> <laughs> she I'm she out. might not be she might not be with us anymore. Hold on. I got to find this. Um, Damn it. Where is it? Uh, and I said she might. All right, don't go suing me. Is this don't like? Go, don't is go this suing like, me, Buckingham <laughs> Palace? I said she might. Is it? Is this like a situation when they like recasted Aunt Vivian in uh, Fresh Prince? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, that's, that's Aunt Viv. <laughs> it's very much. Like, like, no, it's not. It is, like, yeah, it, is. it is very much like that. Like when Dang Edward Norton got so angry, he hulked out and turned into Mark Ruffalo for four. I months. know if I just try and share it on my screen, it's gonna. It's I'm got. I gotta try. It's gonna freeze up the whole podcast. But we we talked about this extensively, and uh, and now they're like they keep up with the shenanigans, dude. Like they think they're gonna get away with this. The, the, Keeping up the, with the shenanigans. It's not her, Drew. That's, what was that? That's, we're taking the time slot of the Kardashians, dude. Keeping up with the shenanigans with Rami and Drew. <laughs> yeah, dude, it just froze your entire thing, man. You just got DDoS. <laughs> uh, because, you know, we're the go-to source for... <laughs> for everybody in the Milwaukee sports <laughs> landscape, especially Q, who's probably watching still. <laughs> now nah, he tuned out. You don't want to hear this. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold on. I got I'll it. Wanna... I got it. Uh... Hold on. Um, gotta share a screen. Boppity bop. Uh, this is great for the people listening on the audio channels. Follow us on uh, Spotify and Apple. Uh, look at this. Thanks. That is not Kate Middleton, Drew. That is not Kate Middleton. Are you seeing that? 
Christmas. It looks like Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> what, say that again. So that looks say like that Dylan again. Mul- I was frozen. What did you say? <laughs> Dylan? <laughs> you out there? <laughs> hey, she she could be a princess too. I, I I have no problem with that. I have nothing against her being a princess. None, nothing at all. <laughs> That's that is not her, man. That's not her. That's very much not her. I don't know how they think they're getting away with this, but that is not her. Dude, do the British not know about like CCTVs? Like, dude. <laughs> God damn, dude. They got caught yeah, right- man. They have they have a long history of murdering. All right. Now that I can say. That I can say without saying allegedly. All right. The royal family has a history of murdering. All right. In in oh. in a number of ways. So, so is Kate is Kate Middleton gonna get her own beanie baby bear that we're all gonna convince ourselves is worth seven thousand dollars? <laughs> the Kate Middleton bear. All, right. all of our moms are gonna have it hanging up in a rack. We're like, no, it's gonna be that's your retirement. <laughs> the Kate Middleton beanie baby bear, guys. <laughs> get it soon at uh, ramiandrew.com, which is not <laughs> not a thing that you can go to yet. We'll see. And uh, who knows? Maybe merch is on, is on the horizon. Uh, yeah. that, that's all I got, Drew. I don't know about you. Yeah, and so I'm like, hungry. I want to go eat dinner. I'm going to argue with that idiot now on uh, through Messenger about his dumb little stat that he texted me because he found it on a meme page. All so, right. You go do that. That's a great use of go, your Monday night. Now we have to go argue the legitimacy of what that means and dig into the numbers when I say, okay, but what do these numbers mean? He's going to fucking ghost me like he's a chick on fucking Tinder. He's going to be all blue. Have fun with that. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hope my fucking brain. All right, dude. All right. This has been episode 34 of Robbie and Drew. We'll talk to you next time.